Hello and welcome to my very scratched table again and we'll have a look today at the Huawei P9 which you can see here and um, it was launched just yesterday and the major um, selling point is the dual cameras which you can see on the back here just if I reflect it like that there you go you can see that one and that one it's a Leica camera now those of you that may have used uh, cameras quite a bit will know who Leica are and um, it's a dual lens um, camera and uh, we have seen dual lenses in the past on um, smartphones that produce 3D images but um, this isn't quite for that this is an RGB sensor in one a black and white sensor in the other and they work together uh, combining um, both of their technology to produce a much sharper uh, image and uh, basically it be you get a superior performance in low light conditions we've been testing that out but I just wanted to show you and by the way this is the front of the phone obviously there's a third camera there um, you've got a 12 megapixel at the back which um, actually is 12 megapixels in um, square format but um, if you want it in widescreen you have to go down to 9 now you sort of swipe down and you swipe up to get these extra menus now although I hold the camera like this and you can see here it's designed to be held like that um, from the position of the buttons you have to kind of hold it like this to get to these menus because for some reason this menu is, is designed to be viewed in portrait style uh, this menu switches depending on which way you hold the phone but um, the other one doesn't do that um, so you can see here you can turn on the GPS tag, the resolution here is 12 megapixels, you can notch that down to 9 megapixels if you want a widescreen shot. It goes down to 6 megapixels should you want to do that. I've been keeping it on 12 for all of the photos that I'm uploading to the site. You can switch the film mode from standard to vivid colours and smooth colours and uh, it just makes the colours pop out of your photos uh, a little bit more. You can turn the usual settings here, camera grid, um, Mute the shutter sound, which is an actual official Leica shutter sound on there. You can do the audio control so you can make a noise or say something to actually activate the camera. And you can capture smiles, you can do object tracking, which is uh, something I mentioned in the podcast. And uh, we're seeing that more and more on handsets. Uh, we saw it at uh, Mobile World Congress on the uh, Sony handsets, but uh, uh, object tracking will basically, you take a photo or you, you're filming something rather, um, say of a football and it will follow that football around and it will keep the focus on that football whether it's close or it's far away. Um, you can touch and hold the shutter button to do certain things, so you can do a burst shot or you can do a focus on there. You can do an ultra snapshot and that's when uh, if you double press the camera, the volume down key when the device is locked you can do uh, certain things. So you can do a, a quick snapshot there if you do that. We can do image adjustments here and we can tweak around with the contrast and the brightness and the saturation if you wish to do that. Now the other settings down here on the bottom we have um, the various different modes, uh, monochrome, Obviously, pretty obvious, everything goes black and white. We have uh, a beauty shot, which uh, will be also activated when you're on a selfie mode. You can blur your face a little bit and uh, try and make yourself look a bit more beautiful. Doesn't work with me, unfortunately, I break the camera. HDR mode, which um, I like to be on all the time. Uh, a beauty video, which is same as beauty, but for video. Video mode, panorama, which of course, um, you swipe around to get a full panoramic view, we've got the night shot there which you hold the camera really still and it will pick out the smallest tiniest bits of light. To be honest I found that the standard photo mode works just as well. You've got light painting which kind of if, you, if you're taking a photo uh, of um, a motorway or highway you can get that light trail of the uh, headlights or the brake lights going past. You have to use a tripod or hold it really steady to do that. There's various different modes here, you've got light graffiti, silky water, star track, you can uh, shoot uh, the sky above your house and get a beautiful shot like that. Um, we can also do time-lapse photography, we can do slow-mo which is quite good, I did that on the train yesterday, we can adjust where the, the, the footage slows down and then speeds up. We can watermark which is good, create an audio note or do a document shot. Now, I'm going to switch it back to, oops not video, I'm going to switch it back to just a standard photo. 
Now we've got this uh, little thing on the side, which I, I did mention this uh, on the article I put on yesterday. It's just a bit tricky sometimes to get this out, but uh, you pop it out and you can see the ISO changing there. Uh, again, I have to hold it this way because the numbers don't rotate with the camera. So it's almost like it's been designed to to, to work in portrait mode, which is uh, goes against the grain for me. I, I don't like photos taken in portrait mode, but here you can adjust the ISO from auto all the way up to uh, 3200, let's more light in, etc. I'll set it on auto, you can change whatever that is, and change whatever that is, and whatever that is. You can change that to manual focus, that basically is, and you can focus um, closer or further away. You can see it's going blurry there. We'll set it to auto focus. We also have, it's just an AFC, there we go, AFS and AFC. We've got um, different light modes as well, so you can set that depending on what type of light you've got. There's loads of different options on here. And you can also set um, where the uh, focus, I believe, is taken from, or the light, I think. And uh, the battery's running low. Now, what we've also got, if we put the pro mode away here, it goes back to just standard um, camera photography. We have here on the left hand side various different, again this is designed for portrait, um, various different filters you can put on there. So if I go nostalgia, I can also make the nostalgia um, more prominent. Again, see it now seems to be designed for landscape mode uh, or, or less prominent. So if I click on this button here, I believe, there we go, so you, can, you get a slider on the left and that uh, increases the effect Obviously, you can't see too much of that because it's pointing at my wonderfully scratched table. Um, I will try and show you that there. See, so you can slide it down. It makes my finger pink. Slide it up, etc. So you can adjust the way that that uh, effect, uh, how how pronounced that effect is. Going to go back to original. We also have this is um, one of the features on here that they are shouting about quite a lot. This is, as you can see here, use this mode to take photos with a shallow depth of field. Recommended for shooting people or objects within two meters of you. This is good if you've got like something close to you and something far away. I will show you a photo I took earlier and I'll hop into the gallery. You can see some of the photos I've been taking here. This photo is one I took with that exact mode. Now you can see here, I've taken a picture of a rock and then it's got something in the distance. I just tap on, uh, I've got to press that to activate it, tap somewhere here and I can focus on the rock. Tap over here, I can focus on the background. You can also tap on it and then adjust the blur in the background. It's really rather good. It, you can do, you can see, you can move that up or down. It's probably not showing up on the, uh, there we go, there you go. See, see how the background now is really blurry. If I tap on that rock again and then move it out, we can bring, bring everything into focus, which is unnatural really. You would never see something close up and far away uh, in focus at exactly the same time. But you can adjust that blur effect and get some really nice um, photos on there. So let's then click down here and we can also add a filter. So I'm gonna go a bit black and white. Now you can see here the foreground is still in color. The background is in black and white. It's kind of funky. So you can become a bit of a, a photography artist. This is a more of a sort of a action shot, maybe that would work better if you've got somebody in the foreground running or coming towards you. Uh, then we've got some coloured effects here, you can put the background more coloured and you can do that, whatever that is, and you can do that. So that looks quite nice. So in, in a matter of seconds, whoops, I have created quite an artistic shot. I can just click save up here and that will save it back to the gallery. And it looks quite cool, I must admit, it looks like an, uh, a painting almost. And uh, I just took that literally um, walking to the shops this afternoon. Here's an example of some of the photos you can take with this camera. So I snapped this um, this afternoon and you can see here it's really rather nice. I must admit the uh, there's no uh, pixelation around the light and the dark sections. It's captured uh, the darker parts down here and the lighter parts very well. And you can do all the usual stuff here as uh, you can with every phone. You can share the shot through social media, through email, through Drive, etc. Uh, upload it to Drive. I've taken a, a lot of different photos here which really quickly. Um, just random trees and things like that. And they've all come out very well indeed. I must admit, 
for me, it's not just the professional mode, the professional side of the camera, because, you know, if you're good at a professional camera, you will be good with this. But for me, for most people, they just want to point and click and shoot. And uh, it works well with that, I must admit. And all the photos that I've taken have come out rather well. So, a quick look around the phone. We've got the... Um, on off button here with a little effect on the edge. We've got the volume up and down. Uh, we also have the Huawei have put a, a special um, type of antenna in here which sort of counteracts your hand. So if your hand here is blocking this antenna on the left, it will use this antenna on the right a bit more and another one. So it just basically ensures that you get uh, a better signal, which is quite nice. This is the P9, by the way, it's got a 5.2 inch screen, it's got a 3000 milliamp hour battery. The, uh, the P9 Plus has got a 5.5 inch screen with a larger 3400 milliamp hour battery and both have got rapid charging so you can plug it in for 10 minutes and you can get hours of additional talk time. Uh, what I'm going to show you now, if we sweep down, we've got all the uh, various things I need to take notice. I've got a couple of chats and missed call here. I can see how many steps. We've got the uh, a few extra apps which I'll get onto in a minute. But I go into shortcuts. We can adjust the, the uh, brightness quite easily here. It's set to auto at the minute. So it's, uh, I'll just crank that up so you can see what's going on. We've got the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth. And by the way, it will prioritize the Wi-Fi based on the quality of service and it will hook on to the Wi-Fi with the best quality of service so it won't keep hopping around and connecting to um, Wi-Fi hotspots aren't so great which is quite nice. Also um, something I was quite impressed with but the little things that Huawei have been working on so that the fact that the, the, the Wi-Fi is prioritized based on the, the, the quality of the service not just the strength but the quality the speed of that Wi-Fi. Also, the fact that it is the fastest uh, phone I have seen for just attaining a signal, getting onto that signal and holding it. So when you get off a flight and you turn on the phone, it takes ages to search for a, uh, on roaming for a, a network and getting connected. This doesn't, this is very, very quick. And I must admit, little things like that are very impressive. Huawei really do um, look at the tiny things that are often overlooked or just, you know, most manufacturers just say, well, that's fine, that, that'll do. So we've got the smart assistance uh, setting here, which will help you out with uh, various um, sort of you know, gloves mode, a uh, smart cover mode, one-handed UI, voice control, motion control. You can do lots of different funky things on there. Um, we've got a do not disturb, we've got the usual accounts and apps. I like advanced settings, I always like messing around with advanced settings. You can see here I'm down to 13% battery already. I've got three hours and five minutes remaining according to this. You can adjust the power plan. We're set to performance at the minute. You can go to smart ultra power saving which will kind of make everything really basic. But uh, if you're on low battery, you don't mind. Uh, what we can also do here, enable ROG power saving. What this is going to do is knock the resolution down to 720 by 1280 as opposed to the full um, HD resolution that it currently has now. Um, so that, that won't change the, the size of the icons or anything like that. It's going to appear um, pretty much the same. You know, you might notice it's not quite as high resolution, but uh, it will reduce your power consumption which is good. You can go into consumption level, you can find out those apps uh, that are sucking your battery. And also Huawei do pop up every now and then with their little helper app and it, it will state what is consuming your data or what is consuming your battery in the background and it will say, hey, did you know that Hangouts has consumed more than 40 milliamp hours today? Maybe stop that from running in the background. What do you think? And it will just suggest little things like that, which is really good for prolonging your battery. Um, I've just ignored it so far, which is perhaps not the best. Here you can see we have dual audio speakers. No, we don't. I must say, sorry, the P9 Plus has got the dual um, sound speakers on the front, but uh, here we've got um, an audio file, the back suite, so I'll put that on and we'll play that. Just turn the volume up so you can hear it. Now, I'm going to turn it down again because YouTube will probably block it, but what you'll see, what what you can't hear, rather, is the fact that that sounds very good indeed. I must admit, uh, the Huawei um, pres presenter yesterday said that um, basically one is used for the treble, one is used for the bass. 
Um, this, by the way, is a P9. It's going to cost 449 for the 32 gigabyte model with 3 gig of RAM. You can put a micro SD card and the SIM into here. I believe this is a single SIM mode, a uh, single SIM version, should I say. The phone itself is very, very lightweight. It's very well built. The finish on it is just stunning. Uh, this morning it looked almost purple, pink. Um, this, right now it looks a bit silvery in the um, sunset that we've got outside. We've got the additional microphone on the top here. We also have the USB-C, which is a bit of a Marmite thing for some people here. The USB-C port, which means you can plug the cable in either way up, but of course it does mean a new cable. Uh, another um, audio speaker there. Uh, the 3.5 millimeter uh, audio port there for your headphones, which of course come in the box as well. And there's the fingerprint sensor. Now, what else can I show you? What else can I show you? Oh, look at that. There we go. That's the, uh, the music we were just listening to. Um, this is your main screen here. I'm just going to go into the settings again and I'll just show you the um, about screen. So we've got the EMUI or EMUI, however you want to pronounce it, uh, interface on top. It's not totally terrible. I know people love or hate these skins that go on top of phones. This is quite understated. It's not too bad. It's running obviously Android Marshmallow. It's got the Kirin 955 CPU, which is uh, octa-core. It's got the three gig of RAM that I mentioned before. You can see here the storage on there, 32 gig total, but it's 20 gig free. I've taken some videos and some photos. And we've got the 1080 by 1920 pixel uh, HD screen. We've also got the micro SD card slot in there as well. Now, what else can I show you on here? With some of the apps that they've got, uh, music videos, calendar, email, all the usual stuff. It synchronizes with Google. You've got all the Google apps as well, which I'll go straight into here. Email, Gmail, rather, YouTube Drive, Play Music, Photo, everything you see here, and all the usual stuff. Google Maps, of course, is on there too. Uh, you've got um, the Play Store. You've got messaging for text messaging. You've got the gallery, which I've just been into. And you've got this health function here, which just shows you how much I've been moving about today. And you can see I haven't really filled this in. I don't weigh 16 kilograms. I really wish I did, but I don't. I'm a little bit heavier than that. You can put your nickname in there. You can take a picture. Let's put my nickname in and just see how well I've done today. So a bit moderate, so you can you can, see you can set yourself a goal and a target weight. That'll do for me. Let's see how I've done today. I've taken 9,619 steps. Um, I didn't, because this is quite expensive, but I did not take this into the gym today because it would have probably dropped out of my shorts like the iPhone did. Anyway, uh, so that just shows you how uh, fit you are. Huawei, which they've been doing for quite some time now, have got a phone manager on there, which keeps your phone fresh and as good as the day it was taken out of the box. You've got a harassment filter as well, which is good for stopping the irritating PPI phone call people and um, have you had an accident in the last two years and all that stuff. So you can block certain messages, block certain phone numbers, and that's easy uh, to set up. You can have a whitelist and a blacklist, etc. Very nice little function, I do like that. Traffic manager here, you can see how much data you've used, uh, how much 4G you've used, uh, and turn on your portable Wi-Fi hotspot. Can have a look in the traffic usage, you can see which apps are using your data. And you can maybe cut that down, or let's click on Gmail, and you can say, well, that's used quite a bit of data today, what can I do about that? And you can say here, don't allow any background data, which basically means it won't collect mail in the background unless you actively go into the app. Could be quite useful. And you can also turn off mobile data full stop, and you can only allow it to contact um, uh, the Google Cloud when it's on Wi-Fi, which is really rather nice. Um, so you can see the daily, weekly, and the monthly um, usage of that. We can go in and see how much battery is remaining, which is not a great deal. And that's basically where we were before. And we can also have a look at the drop zone management here. And there we go, we've still got this music playing in the background, which is totally freaking me out. Um, so yeah, 
Uh, drop zone management. There we go. Um, notification center, system optimization. This is what I was looking for. This uh, cleans up your memory usage, gets rid of any junk, any apps that you maybe don't use anymore. It's a good little facility. There you go. It comes up with some recommendations and you can clean out uh, 712 mix of stuff. We also have Hide Care, which is sort of their, uh, um, their way of helping you with your phone. It's good to uh, assist you if you get stuck. Um, the settings, which I've already gone into. A load of games are installed on here, um, which I will probably uninstall, but there's a couple that you may want to mess around with. Your top apps here, again, stuff I will probably uninstall. I did not install any of these things. These are all on, on here. I don't want booking.com or um, IM. I might use News Republic and WPS Office. Um, what else have we got? Here we've got themes, which is a great way of easily changing the way your phone looks. I know you can go into the settings and can adjust the, uh, the ringtones and the backdrop yourself. You can take a picture of yourself or your family and you can put that on there. But here you can choose a certain theme and you can have your phone look completely different in seconds. You can see most of them are free. Um, let's choose this one with a swan on it. It's going to adjust more than just your background. It's going to adjust your icons, your font, your ringtones, loads of other things as well. So let's download that and that will change the appearance of the phone uh, quite dramatically. Hopefully if my Wi-Fi is fast enough this will be a bearable amount of time for you to watch. So it's downloaded Benby. I can click apply and it's going to say Continue to, so yes, I'm going to keep my existing theme, but I'm going to apply the new theme. And that is it. Now, that's how my phone now looks. So it gives you a whole new look. You can see all the icons have changed on here. Also note there is no app tray, so don't try and slide down because that just doesn't exist. If I don't like that, I can go back into settings or, uh, what was it? What's the settings, was it? Tell me, tell me what it was. Oh, by the way, here's a home screen style. You can go into simple mode, <coughs> Windows Phone, <coughs> which uh, changes the, the way that it looks again, but it makes it more simple. So it's ideal for people that maybe don't want teeny tiny icons like the rest of us. Um, so let's just change it. By the way, here's a display, the wallpaper. You can change all that yourself, and the brightness, the sleep um, time, and the notification light, which is quite nice. It's hidden in the earpiece there and the sound effects here that you've got, as you do on a lot of Android phones. And you can change the way the notification panel and the status bar acts. Now, I'm gonna go back in, because as much as that looks lovely, I think I'm gonna change that theme back to what I had before. So here we go, I'm gonna go with a Medal Magazine. That's a sort of similar to what I had initially, but a slightly different backdrop. So there we go. So you can see here, it's very easy to change. I've put Twitter on there, WhatsApp and stuff, and uh, WordPress I've put on there. We also have some tools. You can have a look in your files, file manager, calculator, torch, mirror, and blah, 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 blah. All the usual stuff you've got to record so you can record files, um, audio. Um, you know, you can use it as, a, a, as an audio recorder if you wish. And what else do we have? We have, that is about it, to be honest. As you can see, uh, you know, the EME, EMUI, the interface itself, you can have it looking a bit strange like this, or you can have it looking fairly um, normal and fairly standard, if you wish. I'm sure there's lots of, um, you know, standard looking um, themes on here, if you wish. You don't have to have it looking all glossy like that. But um, yeah, overall, it's very quick. It um, hasn't um, caused me any grief whatsoever. Um, okay, the app tray is not there, but apart from that, it's a very, very slick phone. I have noticed the back of the phone gets quite warm when you're taking a lot of photos on there, but the focus is very quick, very sharp. The images it produces are, are nice and crisp, and I will upload a load more of those uh, onto Cool Smartphone. Dot com, but this is just a, a little overview of the new Huawei P9, um, which accepts, as I said, it accepts a micro SD card. It's got the two cameras on the back. You've got the pro mode if you wish to use that, but photos come out just as well in the normal setting as well. Uh, I've uploaded loads of photos on here already. It's quite impressive, the uh, photographs. And um, overall, 
I'm very impressed with this uh, handset indeed. Um, so yeah, highly recommended and uh, thanks for watching.